what's up guys? Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another D5 render video for you. So it's been a bit since I've done a video on D5 render. I wanted to talk through some of the new features contained in the newest version, version 1.7.1. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so updates like these are a little bit of a challenge for me because basically they're an improvement of the software, but a lot of what you're looking at are really kind of improvements in your engines and your effects. So it's not like you can point to, hey, check out this new button that you can press and new things happen, it's more that you get better results when you're doing renderings with D5 Render. So let's go ahead and open it up. We'll talk through a few of these and then I might bounce over to their video where they talk through some of the things that they've worked on. And just to give you kind of an idea here, remember that you can download the free version of D5 Render just by going to D5 Render's website and then clicking on the free download. And remember this free download gives you access to basically the free community version, which gives you image export and a basic asset library. Um, if you do update over here um, to their paid version, then you get also animation export as well as more assets for your library. So those are both options, but if you want to give this a try, you can go ahead and download it and give it a shot on your computer. So one thing to note about this is D5 does have some more uh, robust system requirements right now, so you're going to want to make sure that your computer meets those requirements when you're doing this. But let's take a look at what's new. And so when you first open up D5, um, there's actually an option over here to see what's new. This will actually kind of walk you through the different things that they've added. So the one that you can really point to is like a feature is they've added this new library sidebar um, that really kind of helps you organize all of your assets. So if I was to click into, let's just use this example model right here, we'll let it load up. So if I go into my assets, right here, you can see how that's gonna pop up this window over here um, that you can access all of these different tabs. And so there's a drop down where you can switch between your materials and also your models. You can kind of click back and forth between them to see what's in here. So I think this is a, I, I think this gives you a good idea of what's contained inside of your library. I think it's a really good asset manager solution. You can look back and forth. Um, you can adjust the size of the thumbnails to get more or less of these shown up in here. Um, in addition, you can also see any local content that you have. Um, I haven't gotten everything linked up in this newest version yet, but if you do have anything local, you can click to this tab right here. And then you can access your uh, scatter tools down below on the lower left hand side. And so I like how they're improving the interface and making things more accessible and easy to use. And so now if we click through, there's other features that they have in here as well. So I'm gonna link to their video in the notes down below where you can see like visually what they've done. But basically what they've done is they've, they've gone through and they've improved the way that the HDR samples. So basically this improved sampling makes it so that your HDR lighting is more realistic. So it's kind of one of those like, uh, it's kind of one of those software updates again, but it makes your images look more realistic. So if we were to take a look at this and you kind of look at what happens when they switch out the HDRs, the lighting is very realistic with the way that things are being reflected and the way that it's actually lighting the scene. So I think this is going to be a good improvement. I think people are going to like the results that they get with this improved HDR functionality. So the improved self-illumination effect, that one, um, it looks like an improvement to the engine where they've improved the self-illumination sampling. Um, so basically your emissive materials are going to be um, more realistic. Um, I believe is what's going on with this. They didn't really mention it in their video, but it sounds like it's just going to be an improvement to the emissive materials. And this would actually be kind of an interesting tutorial idea that we might look into in the future where we might create something like this and then create some emissive materials just to see what the result would look like. But that's been improved. They've also improved the algorithm that they're using to create the fog. So they've improved the fog effect as well. So it's gonna give you a more realistic result if you're rendering something with fog. So you can see how these images look really good. I really like the way that it kind of scatters the light in the sky um, and gives you kind of the feel that there is actually fog floating around in there. So that that's an improvement that they've made to that engine. And then they've also adjusted your windows so that you can actually click and drag them to resize them to your monitor. So, I mean, th there's not a ton of brand new shiny features features in here, but I like that they're constantly improving this. And a lot of those engine upgrades are going to be the things that really kind of drive your results in the future. So every time they update something like that, I'm really happy to see it. So I do want to note something on their website as well. 
So if you go to their uh, pricing page and then you scroll down, there's a section where they talk about what's coming next. So some of the things they're working on in their roadmap. I, I love it when uh, companies put their roadmap out there because it really kind of gives you the ability to see what they're focusing on. So these are some really interesting um, future things, for example. So path animation obviously is something that's always good because you're always, um, when you're creating animations, telling things to go certain places. So the particle system is really interesting to me as well. So being able to actually add particles to generate water and fire and fog and other things I think could be really interesting as well. I'm interested to see where that goes. This one, the skeletal animation, um, custom skeletal models, I don't know exactly what that means, but I think that is something that would really kind of set them apart from a lot of other programs. So you might get something like that in like Unreal Engine itself, but in a lot of rendering programs, you don't necessarily see that. That. So that could be really kind of interesting too. So sky and weather I think are fairly standard functions that you're seeing across different programs being able to simulate things like uh, rain and wind and other things like that I, I think is something that you're seeing a lot of right now because a lot of rendering programs are used for kind of like architectural rendering and you want to be able to simulate some of that. But if you want to see more information about any of this there's actually a link to their roadmap where you can click right here and actually see their Trello board. And so if you go to this Trello board you can see even more things that they're currently working on. So the stuff that they're currently working on and then there's stuff that they're planning on working on in the future. So you can go through and kind of take a look at what they're focusing on in the future. So there's some kind of interesting stuff in here. It's definitely worth checking out. So that's kind of a quick high level run through of what they're working on right now and what was released in the newest version. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below what you think about this roadmap, what you think about the features, and what you think about D5 Render in general. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.